Hello and welcome to the Alpine Valley School Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Gallup. Today on the show, we talk about the role of staff members at a self-directed school and what exactly it is that we do all day long. This is episode 56 of our show. You can find show notes for this episode at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP56 for 56. You can also find the full catalog of previous episodes at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast. Before we jump in, let me tell you a little more about our school. Alpine Valley School is a private K-12 school located in Denver, Colorado, that follows a self-directed democratic education model, also known as the Sudbury model. On this podcast, we discuss our model of education, share stories from day-to-day life at school, and interview families involved in our program on their experiences. As I said on today's episode, we'll be talking about the role that staff members play in the day-to-day life of a self-directed school. If you were a parent who came into school once or twice a day, you might see me in the course of my duties performing such tasks as wiping up a mess on the main room table, vacuuming some popcorn crumbs, playing a board game with students, or working on a project at the main room table as I wait for rides to arrive at the end of the day. Getting these little glimpses into my overall role might make one reasonably assume that all I do is clean, play, and maybe sew. However, the role of a staff member is actually much more nuanced than how it might appear. There are aspects of my job that go unseen certainly by parents or outside observers, and in some cases even by students themselves. Today, I've spoken to many staff members from Sudbury schools around the world and gotten their perspectives on what it actually means to be a staff member, both the philosophy and the sort of tasks in the day and the life. We'll start talking at a more of a high level. What do staff members do beyond just their day-to-day tasks? What's the role that's held by staff members in the school? And for this and other insights, I spoke to my friend and staff member at East Kent Sudbury School, Kezia Cantwell-Wright. Here's Kezia with her take on what it means to be a staff member. One of the the key concepts of schools like ours is this twin pillars of freedom and responsibility. I guess when students come to a school like ours, they have the freedom is foremost in their mind. They're here to explore things, do what they want to do. And with that comes responsibility. I guess that sometimes you could assume that as a staff member, we have a very similar experience to the students. It can seem that we spend a lot of time talking, hanging out, maybe doing activities with students that we're drawn to. But I think it's really the other way around that for us, we the responsibility comes first. And within that, there is some degree of freedom. We can't just decide that the marketing or organizing the cleaning or, you know, filing our tax return doesn't need to happen. It needs to happen, you know, whether whether it's something we're drawn to or not. And so there's there's a degree of doing things that you enjoy doing and a degree of doing things because they need to be done. I think some parents think that our main job is to teach, and that is one of my jobs uh, when it's asked of me. That isn't top of my list. Top of my list is making sure the the organization and the school functions and holding a community together. I guess it, it can look like a lot of organization as well, which it is, but it's also, it's more than that. And I think one of the aspects of the job that took me most by surprise is just how much of a deep connection you form with each student and how much you really care about them. And now I don't go to bed thinking about two children. Now I go to bed thinking about 36 children and like, oh, they had a bad day and, oh, I hope they're all right. And I'll check in with them tomorrow. And, you know, and it's like your head is full of it. And, oh, it's really sad about their pet and I must get them a card. And, you know, and you're full of all these people's lives. So it's such a complicated job. 
there's all the admin and then there's there's the the teaching but then there's this incredible emotional side and maybe one of the hardest parts of the job as well is to know when do you with, with your responsibility when do you step in and when do you step back because one of my responsibilities is to make sure that everybody's safe and the space is safe and you know that 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 freedom doesn't go too far but at the same time you want people to realize when they've gone too far themselves so sometimes the best way to keep people safe is to wait for them to go actually guys is this a good idea and then other times you just have to step in and say "Mm, let's not do that shall we and that's it's really tricky and so you it's quite draining because you analyze constantly should I should I should I step in should I not step in and yeah it's it's very taxing I think it's um it's not a job you can just turn up and do your hours and go home (laughs) comment was sent in by Kristen Parker Yanal of the Miami Sudbury School. Last year in a virtual meet and greet, a parent asked what staff do, and two students chimed in. Not much, really. I mean, they're the adults and they do financial things, but other than that, not much. All the staff did a great job of keeping neutrally amused faces and not jumping in, but I think we could tell the parents on the Zoom call knew better. There was a mom who attended, I believe, that first meet and greet. She's always been very supportive, but I wasn't sure she actually got it until she called me after the meeting and said, Kristen, you must really be doing your job well. The students actually believe they're doing it. I realized then that she did get it. She's been a manager before and said her goal was always to empower her team so they felt ownership. It takes a lot more work to accomplish that than to stand in the front and be the conductor, dictator, or even cruise director. We say that our staff hold the deep structure of the school. We are always watching that systems are being run with respect and fidelity to democracy and community. We actively model being respectful, responsible adults who have an unconditional positive regard for young people. We both give space and hold space. We could easily do all the tasks at hand, but that would rob our students of the opportunity to take the wheel in this low-stakes, high-value venue. That said, there are so many tasks we must do to allow for others to take the wheel. It takes tremendous energy to make it look like we do not much. My friend and colleague, Larry Welshon, also shared his thoughts on the complicated issue of being a staff member. Here's Larry. I think it probably goes without saying, but I think it should be said that students are the reason that we exist as a school. Staff, although they get to express their individuality and to an extent they get to express their interests, ultimately, our job is to be a resource to the students. Staff also have, and I think all school meeting members do too, um, but I think staff primarily bear the responsibility of a long-term vision of the school as an institution. And that affects how we see things. It affects how we behave. Throughout the years, I have found it to be a humbling experience when students in unguarded moments call me dad. It's touching and it's heartwarming, but I'm not their parent. And I think all staff know this. We are consciously thinking all the time of how to be role models of adult living and adult behavior. We do our best to be real with them and compassionate. 
to them. Our role as staff involves balancing being equals. And what I mean by this is that we each have one vote in school meeting, JC and other meetings, and being people who have lived longer than they have and thus have a lot more experience in life. And remember, at Alpine Valley School, like all Sudbury schools, we have students who range in age from 5 to 18. So do I just listen? Are they seeking my advice? And if so, how much advice do they want? How much can I question them about this? Are they just talking and yammering at me? Or are they actually bouncing an idea off of me for a reaction? There's plenty of circumstances when dealing with young people where you have a choice. Do you intervene or do you not intervene? Being an adult in the community is a huge responsibility. Staff can be resources to parents too. I think it's important for parents to remember that all of us have had direct experience with the daily life at Alpine Valley School. There are staff here who were students for many, many years and then became staff. There are parents who started here as parents and became staff for many years. Most of us have our own children. Some have children here now. We like doing that because we can share our experiences of what we see and about what we understand about the model as it relates to kids. And I, I would encourage any parent listening to this to reach out to the school and make an appointment. We can make that happen. And we're happy to do so because we want you to be comfortable with the model. contribution was sent in by Maggie from the Three Rivers Village School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Self-directed applies not only to the students, but also to the staff. Just like the kids, I am my own boss. I am responsible for how I spend my time at school. I have no singular manager or CEO demanding that the newsletter go out on time or that I must show up for meetings. That's all on me. As a staff member, I am pursuing my interests, passions, curiosity, and facing multiple challenges, just like the students do at school every day. I also spoke with Elizabeth Lund, who works at the Tallgrass Sudbury School in just outside of Chicago, Illinois, and she shared her insights around being a staff member and what people think that we do all day versus what we might actually be doing. Here's Elizabeth. So sometimes I know that there is a parent who thinks that we're like kind of scrolling on our phone and hanging out all day. But yeah, that's definitely not what it's like. Um, you know, there's there's moments, there's afternoons when it is more like, oh yeah, I'm just chilling with the kids. And but it's really, I mean, it's a lot more like running a small business where, you know, anything that comes up, like we have to figure it out. Like either, you know, either us on our own or school meeting. But um yeah, you know, the 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 door isn't working or the toilet clogs or um, there's some issue with our taxes where we have to adjust the payments. Um, all of that has to be done um, among the three of us or with the assistance of the students and the parents. One of the things I realized when we were remote was that a huge amount of my job depends on observing and just sort of paying attention to what's going on around me, like how, how the kids look, how they, how they, you know, what, what sort of emotional state they seem to be in, if they're interested in something, if they're not interested in something. I think that's a huge part of it is just sort of like being aware when things are going wrong. And then also just like knowing where I can be helpful and where like people are just, they're fine. They don't need me. They're, they're doing their thing. I do a fair amount of like looking at the marketing plan and figuring out like, are we meeting our goals? I'm probably the best at the tech for the, among the staff. So like if there's a tech problem, I'll do that. 
Yeah, today today I've spent a good time kind of like working looking through the art supplies and the sewing supplies and kind of getting those neater, and then just a lot of like reacting to whatever the kids need. So like so depending on the day, it can be like every five minutes something is coming in with like how do I write a motion? How do I get certified for the exacto knives? How do we have any string? Somebody broke my toy, just really. Um, and then other days, it's, you know, you're going, you're in like an hour long conversation with somebody and you can really just concentrate on them and uh, like build that relationship with them. beyond the overall philosophy of what it means to be a staff member in a self-directed school, there are questions that naturally arise about what specifically it is that we do all day. To answer these questions, several staff members, including three different staff members at the Sligo Sudbury School in Ireland, sent in sort of audio diaries of their day in the life of what unfolded during their normal school day. And we also had some written contributions by other staff members that I'll be reading to you as well. With all of this, I think it gives a pretty good idea of what it is that staff members actually get up to in our day-to-day lives. Although, of course, depending on the day, it could be completely different. I'll close with a contribution from Yana Clements from the Riverstone Village School in South Africa, which I found both very true and very funny. Let's kick things off with the staff members from the Sligo Sudbury School in Ireland. This is one day in the life of a staff member at Sligo Sudbury School. So this morning on my way in to work, I was met at the door by a student looking to check out a book from the library. And while we were doing this, she said that she wanted to know about shooting stars and comets and meteorites. So we searched the library shelves and found a book on astronomy and I helped her to read it. So she learned about um, the topics that she was interested in. Following this, I organised some paperwork. Then we had our morning circle, which lasted about 15 minutes where everybody um, explained what they were up to that day and any announcements. And following this, we went into JC to deal with a, um, a case between some students. After this, we I harvested some spuds and garlic for a cooking session with some with about five or six students. While we were doing this, questions came up about why we didn't have blight. So I explained about uh, uh, that we use blight resistant varieties and about the timing, etc. And this just this led to a discussion then about um, the Irish famine and the causes and effects of the Irish famine and the resulting immigration to US and Canada. We had a huge discussion about this. We also discussed the nutritional benefits of the potatoes and the garlic. And while we were harvesting, we observed caterpillars, we ID'd them, and we also looked at found other insects in the soil and discussed their purposes and the, their point, their, their, their part that they played in, in the web of life. We prepared, cooked and served some homemade oven chips and garlic bread for around 60 students and staff. We took into account some maths to work out some portion sizes. And then we, after serving it, we cleaned up everything afterwards. As well as that, there was various engagements with students throughout the day, helping them with their interpersonal difficulties. And the result, I was also dealing with a number of students who were upset about tree cutting on a neighbouring field. And we came up with some positive solutions to offset the destruction that they were witnessing, like planting more trees, erecting bird boxes, rewilding parts of the land. And I think that completes everything that I did today that I can remember. So when I come to school, I usually do the opening uh, procedures, which involves opening all the rooms. Then it depends on the day. I do um, a welcome kids. And then depending on the day, again, I go to, to one of the spaces like music room or art room. And I spend uh, uh, my time there like uh, an hour and a half. Sometimes I do a workshop uh, with kids uh, on uh, on art or some uh, on music, trying to show them 
like basic of uh, playing on instruments or trying to show them how to record some sounds with art we do different tutorials like like how to learn the how to draw different parts of the body or how to draw characters or sometimes i just sit there and draw and uh, and kids come in and uh, draw uh, with me at the table and we just talk depending on the day again uh, I do floating, which means I just go around the school for an hour and I uh, check uh, all the spaces, like, you know, uh, just trying to have an eye on all the kids and what's uh, happening around the, you know, those spaces. And at two o'clock, we usually have um, uh, helping hands, which means that uh, each staff member is responsible for uh, some section of the school. I mean, the staff member and a few kids are responsible for cleaning that space. And so we do that for uh, 15, uh, 20 minutes. And after that, there might be a little bit of a time to do like maintenance wise or or at that point in the day, like parents are coming. So sometimes I do uh, check out or or usually um, when the parents are coming, we kind of help the person who's on the checkout to to find all the kids uh, around the school and get them to uh, to their parents quickly uh, after four we starting um starting like cleaning the uh, <clears throat> the place which yeah like brushing cleaning the toilets um just checking everything before we close the school so we just do the closing procedures which means yeah locking up everything windows checking make sure, making sure that everything is switched off after the sorry on the end of the day when the, everything is finished yeah we just close up and go home today what did i do um i played a lot of games it absolutely last train today um, which is unusual. You wouldn't think for Ireland, but it has actually been glorious weather lately and really, really hot. But um, today the rains came down like nobody's business. So there was lots of dripping wet children around the place this afternoon. What did I mostly do? Well, this morning I started the day by hanging out with a couple of students in the library. We played some kind of phonics word games and played um, with a jigsaw. Uh, we talked about the Venus flytrap and lots of other really cool um, interesting animals. Talked about what carnivores were and um, talked about space and the planets and the rings of Jupiter. And that was with some of our younger students, actually. Then we tidied up and uh, I had a wander around the school and I said good morning to everybody that I met and checked in with some students and checked in with the other staff. I lovingly watched as a six-year-old showed um yeah our new our new staff member around the school and showed him what all the spaces uh, were used for at the moment and all the different um rules and yeah it was lovely what else did I do I did some more administration took a few phone calls rang the solicitor about the land sale ordered the concrete pipes we needed for the bridges that are going to be made for us and did some bookkeeping paid some online accounts played some more board games helped to clean up a an injured hand put a bandage on a sore a sore finger chatted briefly with a parent about a few about a few things they wanted to talk about um, tasted some of the amazing food that some of the students had cooked today. I uh, really enjoyed that. And then I think it was probably coming close to home time. So I helped with the cleanup, helped to find students as their parents arrived, helped some students to manage putting all their things back into their bags. And um, yeah, just generally helped them to get organized for home time. And I think that was more or less all that I got up to today in my day in the life of a staff member. Staff member Jana Clements from the Riverstone Village School in South Africa sent in a sort of diary of her day. She wrote to me, Today, I take minutes for a meeting, have discussions about whether we still need the external pottery facilitator or whether interest is low for now, 
have a catch-up conversation with a young person who has just returned from some time away, discuss the advantages of Wii over PlayStation, explain that, as we all know, swimming time is only at 2 p.m., have a conversation with three young people about the pros and cons and how-tos of online dating, identify fabric that can be used to make bunkers for the laser tag fundraiser on Saturday, point out that only meeting can change the swimming time. I personally have no power. Teach two kids how to bake cupcakes to sell on Saturday and assist three others in icing them while discussing the pandemic and who feels what about what's real and what's not. Confirm that the clock does not yet say 2 p.m. Help one of the first kids figure out pricing for the cupcakes based on the costs and our market tolerance for profit. Shove an unsolicited book donation into a cupboard to deal with later when I have time. Ha ha. Remind and assist everyone with cleaning up after cupcakes. Halfway clean the kitchen. Teach someone how to tell the time so they will know when it is 2 p.m. Help figure out song lyrics to something that they were dancing to on the Wii. Discuss with a young person whether and where we can plant carrots and get seeds to do so. Confirm that the clock still does not say 2 p.m. Empathize with a young person who is unhappy about home circumstances. Call up muscled help to remove the old worm farm that wriggles no more. Confirm that the clock still does not say 2 p.m. Discuss the word remind. Remind. Clean some of the seldom used items that we will need for Saturday. Arrange installation of new fire extinguishers. Clean an ancient piece of possibly once fruit from the back of a seldom used storage shelf. Finally find the missing chess piece. Have a discussion with a teen about executive function. Point out that there are still three minutes until 2 p.m., which I will need in order to put the cupcakes into the freezer. Be a lifeguard for several kids swimming, while thinking up a response to someone's email who insists that math takes work and can't be tackled through play. Conflict resolved between two neurodiverse young people who have mutually triggered each other's different sensitivities. Help a young person find their shoes, and a different one, their lunchbox. Keep a young person company while they get their annoyingly loose baby tooth out. Run out of time to finish writing this list and smile wryly when I realize it probably contains less than half of the actual stuff. And all throughout, constantly, get interrupted. That does it for this episode of the Alpine Valley School podcast. I'd like to thank all of the staff members at our sister schools who wrote in and sent us their voice memos and contributed so much to this episode. It was really wonderful to hear all your stories, and I appreciate you sharing them. If you'd like to learn more about the role of staff members in self-directed democratic education, check out the show notes for this episode, located at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP56. For episode 56. You can also check out the full backlog of podcast episodes at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast. If you'd like to learn more about our school in particular, we do host private tours all year round, and we also offer open houses in the summer, and we'd love it if you would come visit. As always, thanks for listening. I'm Mark Gallivan. This is the Alpine Valley School Podcast. And we'll be back again soon with more stories of real learning for real life. Mm-hmm.